Marcus Calgary Elbow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As we mark International Day of Persons with Disabilities, I want to draw the government's attention to the work of the Premier's Council on the Status of Persons with Disabilities. In their most recent annual report, the Council made 30 recommendations across 15 government departments and six community agencies. However, there's no follow-up about past recommendations, and there are no measures to track the implementation of current recommendations. To the Premier, how are you coordinating your ministers to ensure these recommendations are fully implemented in a timely way to the benefit of all Albertans with disabilities? General Premier. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member for the important question because we know it is of critical importance that uh, we constantly look to find ways to improve our services and supports to uh, Albertans uh, with disabilities, uh, Mr. Speaker. So as a result, there's a, um, a great deal of work that is going on, whether we're talking about re uh, reviewing the uh, AISH program and the criteria there as asked for by the Auditor General, whether we're talking about uh, the work that the, new, the, the Disability Council will be doing uh, under the leadership of the MLA from um, uh, St. Albert, uh, whether we are um, talking about the work that's been done with respect to PDD. Thank, Thank you. you, Honourable Premier. Apologies. First, uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, I recently received a business card from a member of the Council, and I was shocked to see a Gmail address. I learned that government staff had created a Gmail address for each council member. Now, this raises a lot of troubling questions, including whether Gmail is FOIP compliant, how the government will manage the increased IT security risk, and how the public perceives something so unprofessional on official GOA business cards. Again, to the Premier, is it standard practice for your government to use Gmail, or is it only happening on this council? And if so, what does that say about the value the government places on this council's work? Honourable Premier. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Let me uh, begin by saying that we very much value the work of the uh, of the uh, committee or the advisory council uh, on disabilities uh, very much, and we've been working, of course, collaboratively uh, with a number of uh, agencies as well as representatives and self advocates within the disability community since uh, our government was first elected. On the matter of the email, I will be happy to have the minister get in touch with the member uh, in order to uh, answer that specific question. Second supplemental. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, earlier this year, this House unanimously passed a bill to create a disability advocate. Albertans were very hopeful that this position would be created quickly to the benefit of Albertans living with disabilities and their families, friends, and supporters. But six months later, not only do we still not have a disability advocate, the government hasn't even started the recruiting process. To the Minister of Community and Social Services, will you commit here and now to a timeline to recruit the disability advocate? And will you include the Premier's Council in the process? The Honourable Minister of Community and Social Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Member, for the important question. We do know that Albertans have waited for decades to have that office set up, and we are proud of the work this side of the House did. We had that office now uh, approved. We, it's not just hiring one individual. It's, just, it's about setting up an office. We have done the background work. And fairly soon, we will be moving with the recruitment. And yes, Premier Council will be included in that process. 